since this video concerns the solemnity of the Sacred Heart, but also notes that it is closely allied with the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is the very next day. It is useful to read from the writings of Maria Valtorta, which relate to the heart of Jesus, and particularly in the hour of his death on the cross. But you have seen how great Mary was in that hour. Her torture did not prevent her from being by far stronger than Judith. The latter killed, the former allowed herself to be killed through her child. And she did not curse, she did not hate, she prayed, she loved, she obeyed, always a mother, to the extent of thinking, among her tortures, that her Jesus needed her virginal veil on his innocent body to defend his decency. She was able to be at the same time the daughter of the Father of Heaven and obey his dreadful will in that hour. She did not curse, she did not rebel, either against God or against men. She forgave the latter. She said fiat to the former. Also later you heard her say, Father, I love you and you have loved us. She remembers and she proclaims that God has loved her and she renews her act of love for him. In that hour, after the Father had pierced her and deprived her of her reason for existing, she loves him. She does not say, I do not love you anymore because you have struck me. She loves him and she does not grieve over her sorrow, but over what her son suffered. She does not shout because her heart is broken but because mine is pierced. She asks the Father the reason for that, not for her sorrow. She asks the reason of the Father in the name of their Son. She is the spouse of God. It is she who conceived through union with God. She knows that no human contact has generated her child but only the fire descended from heaven to penetrate her immaculate womb and lay there the divine embryo, the body of the man-god, of the God-man, of the redeemer of the world. She knows, and both as spouse and as mother, she asks the reason for that wound. The others were to be given, but why this one? when everything had been accomplished. Just a momentary pause there. Um, the wounds in the hand, the, the, the nails, the, the crown of thorns, all these, the stripes that were given to Jesus, all that was prophesied. And, um, Mary is speaking about the wound in the side. Jesus had died. Why have the spear going to his side? What was the point of that? So Jesus continues, Poor mother, there was a reason which your sorrow did not allow you to read on my wound. And it was that men should see the heart of God. You have seen it, Mary, speaking to Marie Valtorta, and you will never forget it. But see, Although Mary at that moment did not see the supernatural reasons for that wound, she immediately thinks, it did not hurt me, and she blesses God for that. She does not mind that the wound hurts her, poor mother, so much. It did not hurt me, and that is enough, and serves her to bless God who sacrifices her. She only asks for a little comfort in order not to die. She is necessary for the dawning church, of which a few hours previously 
she was created the mother. The church, like a newborn baby, needs the care and milk of a mother. Mary will give it to the church, supporting the apostles, speaking to them of the Saviour, praying for it. But how would she be able to do so if she breathed her last tonight? The church, that only in a few days time will be left without her head, would be completely an orphan if also Mary died. And the destiny of newborn orphans is always precarious. God never disappoints a just prayer and he comforts his children who hope in him. Mary proves that through the comfort of Veronica. She, the poor mother, had the image of my dead face impressed in her eyes. She cannot resist that sight. That is not her Jesus aged, swollen, with eyes closed, not looking at her, with lips twisted that do not speak to her or smile. But here is a face that is the face of Jesus alive, sorrowful, wounded, but still alive. Here, his eyes are looking at her. His lips seem to be saying, mother. Here, his smile still greets her. Just to make clear there, the, the veil of the Veronica is, as most Catholics know, is a veil upon which is imprinted the face of Jesus. And that imprinting took place on the way of the cross when Jesus having been sentenced to death by Pontius Pilate then is given his cross and he carries it all the way to Calvary and is crucified upon it. On that way, as our stations of the cross show, the holy women meet him, he falls several times, and but Veronica is one of the persons who meets him. Now, her actual name, as given to us by Maria Valtorta, is Nike. But she anyway meets Jesus on the way of the cross and she has a, a cloth which she's brought and she presses it against his face. She doesn't wipe his face because the pain would be too great if she wiped his face. But by impressing his the cloth against his face, that will take off the, a lot of the blood and the dirt and will allow Jesus to see more clearly. That image is given to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in that period between the death of Jesus and his resurrection from the dead, she has that veil. She doesn't have it immediately, so she's utterly desolate at first. I can't remember whether it's the morning of Holy Saturday she receives the veil of the Veronica. And I, I'm not sure, I think it may be Longinus, the centurion who is there at the foot of the cross, who um, brings it to her. But I can't be certain. But she has this veil, and she then is in a position to adore the face of Jesus. In fact, we have to note this for those who criticize us Catholics who have relics and icons, holy pictures. This is the very thing that Mary was doing. That cloth was not Jesus, but it was given in the true way that our Eastern Catholic brothers and the Eastern Orthodox have. The icon is like a window on, on the holiness of God and the holiness of the particular individual who's represented in that art, piece of artwork. 